So this is a 16 inch rifle. This is a 12 and a half inch pistol. And this is a 10.3 inch short barreled rifle. Let's talk about it. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms and if you're wondering why I'm wearing a plate carrier, well you're just going to have to see uh, tomorrow's video. New plate carrier by Guard Dog Body Armor, by the way, ugh, pretty sweet, you'll be seeing it coming soon, but not what we're here to talk about today. I also got scar mags on my mag pouches, so you can only imagine what the next giveaway is. But anyway, what we've got today is something that I've been asked quite a bit about. AR pistols versus short barreled rifles versus regular AR rifles. What are the differences and how many years will you spend in prison if you make your pistol look like this? So let's go ahead and talk about that really quick because it is kind of a big deal. First of all, an AR pistol is ultimately an AR-15 style carbine that has been manufactured as a pistol, which yes, manufacturers can manufacture pistols like this guy right here. Notice this is not a stock on this gun. This is a brace. Hopefully you guys were able to take advantage of the comment period that the ATF had opened up when they were thinking about, you know, making these stocks and NFA items, which these are not as of right now. And they were never intended to be stocks. They were actually intended to assist wounded veterans shooting. So that way they could still ex ex exercise their second amendment right, which is great. So awesome job to like the SIG brace and SB tactical for making stuff easier for our wounded vets. Awesome. So the AR-15, like we see this guy right here, we all know and love. This, what makes it a rifle is it has a barrel of at least 16 inches. It has a stock. And the most important part is it was manufactured as a rifle. And then you get into, well, this guy. This is a registered short barreled rifle. It falls under the National Firearms Act and if you were to take a vertical grip and a stock and throw that knowingly, had the intent to throw these items onto this gun which is manufactured as a pistol and is not registered as an SBR, you could actually be facing what's called 10 and 10, 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. I know, it seems kind of ridiculous but those are gun laws for you. Anyway, the biggest difference between these two is honestly just the registration. What makes a pistol is having a barrel shorter than 16 inches like on the rifle. So you can have that guy all the way down to, well, whatever you want it to be, as long as it's not too ridiculous, like a seven and a half inch barrel. But even a 10.3 or a 12.5 like the IWI Zion right here, again, manufactured as a pistol, you can't have a vertical grip. The reason you can't have a vertical grip is because in lawmakers' eyes, you then have the intent to shoot this with two hands. Newsflash, I shoot a majority of my pistols with two hands, but don't tell anybody else that because now it's a short-barreled rifle now. Freaking laws anyway. The IWI Zion, great AR pistol. Love the fact that it does have a 12 and a half inch barrel. In fact, we can probably go ahead and run a couple rounds through this guy. Well, actually, let's start off with this one here. Let's go, let's go with the 16 inch, the Springfield Saint that we have right here. Awesome rifle. Again, at least 16 inches in length for the barrel. This guy does have a mid-length gas system on it with the A2 front sight post and a stock. But remember, what makes this as a rifle is the fact that it was manufactured as a rifle. Before we go loud, that would be a mistake. Let's go ahead and make sure you practice your safety, proper protective equipment, eyes and ears, boys and girls. All right, let's go down range and shoot this guy a little bit. Why not? Is that optic zeroed? About to find out. Yeah, zeroed enough. Anyway, similarities between all these firearms. They're all AR style, so they all kind of look like this right here. All use AR triggers, stocks or braces, grips, safety, so different types of controls, bolt carrier, bolt carrier group, all of these, all of these parts can be swapped out and work, but not all of them would be then legal, unfortunately, because if I were to take this stock and throw it on that pistol, well, that's an illegal SBR. By the way, 
Have I told you how much I like the Springfield Saint for an out of the box AR? Great option. Okay, so we've talked about the rifle, what makes it a rifle, and yes, manufacturers also make NFA items right out of the manufacturer as well. Can you legally take the stock, the vertical grip, vertical grip, and equip that on an AR pistol? After you file your paperwork with the ATF and you get approval to do so, you pretty much have to submit a tax stamp, $200 tax. Uh, you have to submit the serial number, the manufacturer, pretty much your address, and all the information that you don't want to give the people the, that the government already has anyway. And you submit that, and after the wait periods, they change, right? They, they vary. A couple years ago, it could have been anywhere between six to seven months. Uh, whenever I submitted my paperwork for this guy and other suppressors and things along those lines, it took me almost a year. It was 11 months to get the paperwork in for that guy. And that was in 2013 or 14. So that was a while ago. I've had that guy for a while and it runs great. Watch me have a malfunction on camera today. But uh, anyway, so yeah, there is a wait period and that's only because you have to go through this approval process. You have to submit that tax and all that type of fun stuff, right? Well, anti-fun stuff. Anyway, let's load up our classic firearms mag that you see right there. Yeah, I like that. Let's go shoot this guy now. And now as it stands, again, right now, which is Tuesday, September, it is September, September 28th, uh, the ATF has said, as long as you don't intentionally shoulder this guy, right, when you're shooting, it's fine. But if it, on occasion, through recoil or whatever else, it hits your shoulder, okay. So just don't use it as a stock, right? Okay, cool. Looks like the MRO has actually sighted in on this guy too. Sweet. So the SB Tactical Brace, the M4A brace that you see right here is reminiscent of an M4 style stock. It is adjustable for that a different length of pull or whatever else you might need with it. And it's made to wrap around the forearm. I can actually just go ahead and show you guys exactly how it's supposed to be used. So that way it is easier. Let's try not to lose the Velcro strap here. There we go. Get this guy on up in here like so and down on the arm so now it's a little bit more stable if i'm having to shoot single-handed just like that i can still go two-handed not as comfortable or ergonomic or anywhere is accurate but there you have it that was its intention to be able to assist those that might not have full use of all of their limbs or whatever else. And like I said, keep in mind, you can have an angled foregrip. You can have even a hand stop, which is pretty much just this part here. You can have like, well, this is a hand stop. So there you go. You can have an angled foregrip like on the upcoming giveaway, but you can't have a vertical grip. If you can wrap your whole hand around it, that's ultimately what they look at as a vertical grip. But again, it gets real, Difficult because like the stubby grip that I have on the Mark 18 back there, that SBR, it counts as a vertical grip, but I technically can't wrap my whole hand around it, but somebody smaller than me, smaller hands like Alec, he could wrap his whole hand around it. And so therefore, at what point is it considered just a hand stop? And I don't run it like a vertical grip either. And you'll see that here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and finish this mag out. Yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, I think I've been using the crap out of this mag. But anyway, okay, so now you've seen the AR pistol, you've seen the AR rifle, and here's how I like to hold my SBR. I don't do this number. Sure, I can get my hand around it, but notice I still have quite a bit of my hand over here hanging off, right? But I typically like to run more so like this. I kind of use it a little bit more as an angled foregrip, but with the way I have my pressure pad set up and everything, this is actually more comfortable and ergonomic for me uh, over an angled foregrip. I also have the long version of this guy, but I don't prefer that because this is a vehicle that, or a gun that I keep in my vehicle, and I would like to have something a little bit shorter rather than a little bit longer. It sticks out maybe that far. That way it's easier for me to maneuver inside of my vehicle if and when I ever need to. So let's go ahead and run a couple rounds through this guy. And because this is a short-barreled rifle, this is a registered item, 
I can run this guy however I want. Vertical grip, stock, lights, lasers, whatever you could ever ask for, I can do that. Y'all know I love my Mark 18, right? I do love my Mark 18. Bet you guys didn't know that. Anyway, so another big thing to think about when making a purchase of an AR firearm. Rifles you can purchase as long as you are of legal age, which is in most states, 18 years of age. As long as you're not a felon, you've got a clean background and all that stuff, uh, you can purchase a rifle. Pistols, you have to be at least 21 years of age. Uh, short barreled rifles, NFA items, similar. So you can purchase a rifle if you are at the age of 18 years of old. If you are looking for a defensive firearm, you live out wherever, I, I have seen a lot of guys, we've been to Nebraska and Idaho, and there's a lot of guys working farms and everything else that have coyote pro problems. This is a fantastic setup for doing that. So still being able to effectively do your job and also protect your livestock is something that I think a lot of people look for and to protect your home. Boom, AR rifles where it's at. If you are looking to go across state lines, having a short belt rifle gets a little bit more tricky. You actually have to get permission from that state's government to transport this across state lines, utilizing a Form 3 and stuff like that through the ATF. It's, uh, it's cumbersome with NFA items. Suppressors fall under a similar rule, but aren't as heavily regulated in that sense. And also to silencers and suppressors, they're not weapons, they're not firearms themselves, but for whatever reason, they have to be regulated like one. If you ask me, they're a safety device. AR pistols, if you have a concealed carry permit or if you've got, you know, states like, for instance, we border South Carolina, Georgia, I can leaf lawfully carry this across state lines without having to worry about running into any issues. And then another big question comes into play too, and this is something I'd like to hear from you guys down in the comments section about, do you think most of your local law enforcement officers know these laws? If they were to see this in your back seat, would they actually know to ask for your tax stamp or how many ever tax stamps you might have on your gun? Because if I'm running a silencer, they might need that too. So there's a lot of questions up in debate about it. And that's why a lot of these gun laws are so cumbersome because even your local law enforcement officers, at least a lot of the ones that I know, if this isn't their hobby, well, they know how to catch you speeding, but when it comes to firearm laws, good luck. But I wanna hear from you guys. That's my opinion on it, on the matter. I wanna hear from you all down in the comments section below. What are your needs? What, do, what falls in line with you? What do you think about law enforcement officers and being able to actually differentiate and enforce those laws? So I'm, again, just curious, because it is very easy to make that mistake. Some of you is probably intentional. Don't break the law, right? Uh, it's easy to make that mistake throwing a vertical grip onto your pistol or a stock and not knowing the difference. I talk to a lot of people, again, this seems like it might scare a lot of people, like I wanna buy an AR pistol and I wanna throw on some cool accessories, but I don't wanna break the law. And it's like, it's actually pretty easy not to. Just make sure it's a brace or a hand stop or angle for a grip at the end of the day. Uh, but I, I talk to a lot of people when they see the Mark 18, they're like, oh yeah, I've seen you in that video. I know you love it. It's like, I wanna build a gun just like that. I'm like, are you prepared for that? Because you have to already look at the price of everything that you want to build out, and then an additional $200 tax you have to pay, and then that's only to get approved or told you can exercise your Second Amendment right. It's a, yeah, it's grumbling frustration noises. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. Again, I want to hear from you guys down in the comment section about everything I mentioned before. That is just a very easy breakdown from a AR rifle, a short belt rifle, and an AR pistol. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. And I try to, it's been getting a little more difficult lately, but I've been trying to get to all of my DMs on Instagram as well. As you guys know, Instagram pretty much has us uh, blocked. We are there as classic firearms picks. So we're playing it very bland. All you're gonna see is a photo of most likely me and a gun. And you can only imagine what we're doing with that gun like this. If you see this gun on our Instagram, Classic Firearms Picks, then you know we're probably giving it away. You guys, of course, can DM me at magdump underscore Morgan. Not that I like to do any magdumps or anything, not like I just did three. And uh, 
I'll see if I can answer your guys' questions. But of course, this community and a lot of you guys, a lot of our viewers are also a great resource. Appreciate you guys. And make sure you're helping out all of those new people to this community. If they've got questions, don't be jerks. Help them out. And most of all, exercise your Second Amendment right and get more people involved. And that's really the biggest thing you can do and educate those. Anyway, this right here is the LWRCI SMG 45, chambered in 45 ACP with the Vortex UH-1 holographic sight. This thing is sweet. I love this little sub gun. Technically not a sub machine gun because it's only semi-auto, but this is a pistol. This is manufactured as a handgun or as a pistol, complete ambidextrous controls, which is fantastic. Very cool shooting, has a, uh, utilize what's called a short recoil, delayed blowback design, which is just freaking awesome. And I might go run a couple rounds to it. But anyway, I'll leave it off there, guys. As always, I appreciate your business. I'll see you down in the comment sections and make sure again, you are following us on Instagram and letting them know that we're gonna be back with even more 2A material forget them. Anyway, God bless guys, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.